this lesson we are going to learn how to answer IELTS Academic Writing Task 1, namely how to describe a line graph. I'll give you all the essential information to give a band 9 answer. So let's take a look at the given line graph. What it says? The line graph below shows the household recycling rates in three different countries between 2005 and 2015. So, you are always given a description of your graph in your topic. This information is very important as it helps you to understand what's going on on your graph. So, read the topic carefully. Now, we can take a closer look at the graph. Down the vertical axis we have the percentages and along the horizontal axis we have the years. We can also see that we have three countries, the UK in blue, France in red and Germany in green. So, that's our line graph. Now let's see how you should structure your answer. Here is the standard structure that you should follow to give a band 9 answer. It consists of introduction and body paragraphs. You should never write a conclusion when describing a graph. So, the first paragraph you write is your introduction. After that, you start writing your body paragraphs. In your body paragraphs, you should, first of all, give something called a general overview. Secondly, give the detail. Now, let's see how you should write each paragraph in order to produce a band 9 answer. For the introduction, you need simply to paraphrase the information from your topic. It should not be longer than two sentences. You see, you need simply to tell what your graph shows and for what period of time. And here is how I wrote it. The line graph illustrates the regional household recycling rates in the UK, France and Germany from 2005 to 2015. As you see, the first two words were kept the same, I didn't change the line graph and uh, you should never ever change the type of your graph because it will lose the meaning if you do so. So, if you have a table, keep the table. If you have a bar chart, keep the bar chart. And if you have a diagram, keep the diagram. I had the line graph, I did not change it. And after that comes the verb. And the verb can always be replaced with a synonym. So it's a very good idea to paraphrase the verb. So, instead of shows, you can use illustrates and gives information about. There are also other synonyms, but it's enough to remember these three for your introduction. After that, I expanded the phrase household recycling rates into regional household recycling rates according to the graph. So you see, I look at my graph and I look at my topic at the same time. And I include all the key information from my graph and from my topic into my introduction. After that, I list the countries. Instead of simply saying three countries, I give the specific names. I say the UK, France and Germany. And it's a very good technique to give the names, as you should be very specific when introducing the graph. So, Always try to list countries in your introduction. Finally, we have a time period, which you should always give when it's possible. So, I change the phrase between 2005 and 2015 to from 2005 to 2015. So, that's always our introduction. It's absolutely clear, it's absolutely accurate, so anyone who reads it without seeing our graph will have a clear understanding of what our graph shows, for what countries and for what period of time. To learn more ways of effective paraphrase for your introduction, you can see the link above. Now let's move on to the next paragraph. After you have written the introduction, it's time to write an overview. An overview is a paragraph that contains all the key information from the graph. When given an overview, you should not state any specific details. 
you should simply write what's happening on the graph overall. So, no dates, no numbers, no percentages in your overview, just general trends. So, let's take a look at the key features on our graph. It's easy to note that the UK and Germany's rates went up, while France's rates went down. So that's our two key features. You should normally have from two to four key features. And here's how I wrote my overview. The recycling rates of the UK and Germany showed a steady but significant rise over the period, while the percentage of recycled waste in France experienced a downward trend. As you see, I'm just saying that the recycling rates of the UK and Germany rose and that the recycling rates of France declined. Note how I use the linking word while to contrast the opposite trends. It's a very, very nice technique. Also note how I used a synonym to avoid repetition. The first time I said the recycling rates and after that I said the percentage of recycled waste. And it's a very good paraphrase. Next, instead of show the significant rise, I could also use roll significantly or showed an upward trend. And instead of showed a downward trend, I could say declined, experienced a decrease and so on. So that's always our overview. After you have finished the general overview, you need to give the specific details. It's a good idea to divide your part of writing, where you give the details, into paragraphs. And to do that, you need to group your data by some feature. In our case, we could group data in two ways. The first way is to group by country, so that we can describe each country's rates in a separate paragraph. I mean, we could describe the UK's rates in the first paragraph, France's rates in the second paragraph, and Germany's rates in the last paragraph. Or the second way is to group by similar trend, the same way as we did in our overview. The second option is more logical as it follows our overview, and I choose this option. So, I will describe the increasing trends in one paragraph and the decreasing trends in another paragraph. And here's my first paragraph with the details. I started by describing the data in the beginning of our time period. In 2005 the recycling rates of the UK and Germany were nearly 35% and 20% respectively. After that I describe how Germany's rate changed providing the percentages in some important points and in the end of our time period. Germany's rate increased sharply throughout the period, exceeding France's rate in 2009 and reaching almost 60% in the end of the period. You see, I chose the point where Germany's rate outraces that of the France to be important but it's up to you to choose your important points. However, you should always indicate the percentages in the beginning and in the end of your time period. And finally, I describe how the UK's rate changed. In the meantime, the percentage of recycled waste in the UK grew to 40% in 2007 and then remained steady until 2009. During 2009-2011, it experienced a rapid surge to more than 50% and continued with a gradual increase to 60% in 2015. And here's my second paragraph with the details. Again, I describe France's rate in the beginning of the period, in the end of the period and in some important points. In early 2005, the recycling rate of France, 50%, was the highest among the three countries. However, 
it dramatically declined to 30% in 2013. Then, there was a growth of 10% in 2015, but France's recycling rate was the lowest in the end of the period. As you see, I use the superlatives and adjective dramatically to highlight the big change. Also, I always support my details with data. For example, a growth of 10%. And you should support your writing with enough data too. So, if you say that there was a change, don't forget to write the amount of change. So, write how big it was. And always write your task 1 answer in one tense. So, if you are describing something that happened in the past, you should write the whole description in past simple tense.